Hello, I'll be talking about adding GPSs into Betaflight today and, and seeing how that works. This is kind of a follow up from a video I did on Arduipilot, there's a, a link here. And in that I thought I could use a standard GPS without a compass to work with Arducopter. It turns out you do need a compass and it wouldn't work at all without it. Now at the end of that video you would have seen me holding up this quad saying hey look I've put the GPS in here, let's test it out. So that was a little bit short lived and here's why. You can see me, it's, it's connected okay, it's going okay and in my first flight I was noticing I was getting this weird stuff from the receiver and then I got a complete RX loss and it fell out of the sky. Now a quick word of warning about uh, telemetry receivers with GPS. I've had it in the past um, a lot of times as, uh, with planes mainly where I've had autopilot systems. If I was putting the GPS receiver too close to a telemetry receiver because they send back a signal it would wipe the GPS out. You didn't have to be that far away but you just had to be the right place away. That's a little bit harder when it comes down to a quad because the amount of space you've got to move stuff around is, is fairly limited. Um, and in this one I had the GPS here originally and this has got um, an X4R receiver right beneath it so I ended up putting the receiver over there and then I, I got a better fix on satellites but it still wasn't ideal and obviously we had an RX loss because I, I don't think that receiver is, is quite right. So yeah we, we decided to go without that frame and use this frame instead uh, and this has got an R9 on there. I, I decided I'd revisit this and you may have seen this quad before because I, I used it in a couple of bits about adding smart port telemetry and then how to use soft serial to free up UART ports so I could add this GPS to it. Um, I won't go on about R9 at the moment, I, I did some firmware updates to that but I'm going to cover that in an R9 video so this one is all about the GPS. So let's have a quick look or a reminder about how exactly you would install one of these GPS's in terms of um, physical wiring and what goes on to Betaflight to set it up. So I'm going to be using this Betian BN220 GPS because I already had it. Um, another one that got suggested to me was the 180 which is slightly smaller has the same wiring. Now as per the last video if you've got an Omnibus F4 you can pretty much plug it in depending where you can plug it or you might have to slightly rearrange the pins in the other one but if you're soldering on then take a quick note of the pin outs here the most important thing of course is to have your your ground and your power around the right way but also make sure you cross your TX and RX so TX goes to RX on the UR and RX goes to TX on the UR and then it'd be able to talk both ways to it and it sounds obvious but yeah when you install it make sure it's this way up you'd be surprised the number of people that have it mounted upside down and then wonder why they can't get any satellites locking so let's go into beta flight now and I'll show you the quick setup I did. There's not really too much to it, it, uh, it kind of works things out itself uh, much of the time. Obviously you need to go and actually say you've got a GPS and get your UART right and all I did was say GPS and it sort of worked out the, um, the board rate for itself there. Configuration wise there is a little bit to do here. Essentially you have to turn GPS on here and decide what your protocol is. The protocol of the, the BTN 220 is UBlox and it's auto config but you've got um, other ones there as well should you need it. Now failsafe is probably the easiest place to actually set up your GPS rescue mode. I'm going to come to the rescue mode stuff in a bit more detail but um, I, I would say the first time you try this out keep it in drop mode but you'll just need to select this to actually change what you've got there and the sort of things you've got this is me after changing it around a bit so you had your default angle would have been 32 degrees your initial altitude 50 meters um, your ground speed would have been 20 meters per second um, I actually had this slightly different to start off I had 32 here and I tried 10 meters per second ground speed. I found those two combinations a little bit too slow so I changed them to this to get the right speed. I thought 20 meters per second which is something like 40 something miles an hour was a little bit too much so I changed that. I also changed the minimum satellites from uh, 8 to 6 just because I wasn't sure how quickly or how well they would lock but 8 is probably a more sensible thing. Anyway we'll, we'll come back to the rescue mode in a second because of course that's not the only thing but yeah change them with that but the first time you fly it keep it in drop because um, you don't know what it's going to do at first and you need to see if everything's working right before you do anything there. Uh, the other thing we did a change on is to actually add a GPS rescue mode on a switch 
because you might want to check that out. It, I also found it quite useful to have a GPS satellite count on a switch just so I could double check uh, if my sats were locking in without looking at the LSD, it will basically, if you've got a beeper, it will just beep the amount of satellites it's got. If you go into GPS and your quad is powered up, or at least the GPS is, you should see this stuff start to come in. And if you've got an area of vaguely openness, I managed to lock this inside the house or pointing it outside the window, you should see stuff going on here. The most common factor in not being able to get a signal lock is, as I've mentioned, you've got a telemetry receiver that's quite close by or you've got the rx and tx crossed and it's not working at all you should notice if you've got that more in the osd if you've got absolutely no signal coming in from the gps it won't even bring up any of the gps uh, osd features but talking of the osd uh, this is what i did i added lots of stuff so aside from all the normal stuff we have now got a return to home pointer arrow a distance from home a cumulative distance of how long the flight has been my satellite count here it starts getting a little bit crowded doesn't it and then i've got my height and then i've got the speed i wish i just put an extra digit on k sounds like something different than kilometers which is what it is finally down the bottom here i've got my uh, long and latitude uh, which is quite handy for finding things. Now, you'll be absolutely fine with a longitude and latitude. Of course, I'm, I'll am i show you what this looks like, but just to sort of keep privacy and stop me from having to blur it, I've come up with um, a profile 2, which shows it without the long lat, just so I don't have to blur it out all the time. Okay, so that's it. So let's do my first set of uh, GPS flights, uh, and I'll show you what that looked like. Okay, so we have the GPS ready to go. We've got a headwind coming this direction, which is quite handy because I've got some space to fly out that way, test GPS rescue mode, uh, basically see how it does. In my first couple of flights, I managed to not record my initial DVR, which where I had the GPS coordinates, and I did a lot more rescue mode testing. So this is actually sort of my second flight. And I'd already done like a bunch of testing at this point, so I was kind of just flying it around a bit. But anyway, the, the important things of rescue mode is you need to be at least 200 meters away because it has that 200 meter descent time. And what I found interesting about it, you see I'm at 55 meters there, and instead of dropping to 30 meters, it goes upwards. And why is that? It took me a little while to figure out, but when I went back and read the documentation properly, it was the case of it will ascend to your altitude for returning or it will decide what is your highest altitude you've come up with and go 15 meters above that, which I hadn't realized at the time. So you see there, what I did is, is I flicked back out of rescue mode just to take control of it. The rescue mode doesn't come and land your quad. Basically, the idea is it's at 200 meters away, it starts descending towards your position and will essentially just keep crashing into the ground. Um, if you do nothing about it. But you can see there the, the interesting stuff we've got on the, the dialogue here. We've got our distance from home. We've got our return arrow, which tells us where we're going. Um, our speed and height looks fairly good. Height's a little bit flaky as it tends to jump up and down a bit, but you, you get the general gist of it. But uh, yeah, the, the direction the home arrow worked quite nicely. The distance seems to work good. And generally I found out I can do about three kilometers on a 1.3 battery at, at the rate I generally fly it. I found that my satellites would sort of come and go depending whereabouts I was in the field. So sometimes they'd be sort of around 10, sometimes they'd be at 14. But the reason I decided to go back and change this uh, rescue mode is uh, I'll show you another flight I did. So I've done a little bit of flying already on this flight and I'm flying out again just to do another rescue mode test to see how it does. And you can see I'm at about 20 meters at the moment and I'm going to flick my switch into rescue mode just as soon as I get far away enough. As you can see, I'm only like 150 meters away at the moment. I need to be a bit further. So we flicked into rescue mode and we're rising up because we were at a distance uh, or an altitude beforehand. We've, we've actually got up way much higher than I wanted to. But you can see the quant kind of, because it sort of meanders back at 10 meters per second, it's kind of like, okay, we're sort of going back, but we're up really high. We're starting to descend. It's kind of facing the wrong way. And it's like, oh yeah, you're over there, aren't you? I'll better turn around a bit more. 
and try and go more towards you. See, I wasn't I wasn't too happy with this as a rescue mode in terms of it didn't seem to be coming directly back enough. I left it a little bit longer before I took control there, so it was right over the top of me. So that bit was fine, but I wanted a, a more sort of coming direct towards me. So that's why I changed those parameters. I changed my speed to 15 meters a second. I changed my max angle rate to 36 degrees and I'll show you what that looks like now. And here's my second day with GPS and I've got the long lat down there and you're probably thinking well why are you showing us this if you're going to blur it off? It's a, it's a bit of a weird thing. Um, they were important to have there because what I used them for is to go ahead and go into Google Earth and check various places on my map against where I was standing and where the coordinates were to see how accurate it was and it was pleasantly accurate within sort of five or six feet I was able to get my position. So I'm going and I'm rechecking my rescue mode this time. You see I, I took off with not as many satellites, that's me being impatient. The first time this tends to lock satellites, it takes a, a good few minutes, so I was like, oh, whatever, I've got eight, I'll go and, and try this thing out. So I'm keeping deliberately low this time to make sure I haven't gone above my 30 meters. So I flicked it into GPS rescue mode and you see it's still overshot up to 40 meters before it keeps coming down. But this time I'm a little bit happier with how this is coming in. It's going a little bit more towards me, uh, a little bit more direct. Uh, the the angle that it can, can fly at is better and it obviously got more speed there uh, and it's coming down a bit quicker. So I've, I've taken control again um, so I can come back for another test. Uh, and this is what you need to do. You need to go out there and try it a whole bunch of times and make sure you're satisfied before you even think about having this as a fail safe. Um, and I did it over and over and over again to make sure I was absolutely perfectly happy with with what it was doing and anything you need to tweak, go back and tweak it because that's all the important stuff. We're doing it again and we're rising up higher this time. That is such a weird thing. It, it, it's just odd that I can imagine if it was already at above the level where you wanted to return it would just return at that one but the fact it's like well at some point you flew at 60 meters therefore I'm going to take it up to 75 it, it you know weird but yeah so the idea is if you've lost video you hit rescue mode it keeps coming back and then you can pick it up and land it line of sight or let's say you've lost the control signal so you stick it into rescue mode as it comes back it will regain the signal and you need to take over. If you're doing that it's important to have your sticks in a position where it's not just going to drop out the sky when it recovers the position else you're going to be in trouble. So you might even want to flick it into GPS rescue mode manually on your stick if you ever hit that as it goes into a fail safe. But I just want to fly around again and show that I was liking the fact that you had the sort of return to home arrow, the distance from home, all that sort of thing. If you're exploring a slightly unfamiliar area, it's quite useful. But I have to say with this, this is a secondary tool. Beetleflight rescue mode is very much experimental and shouldn't be relied on. Um, and nor is anything on the GPS, so don't just use it blindly. Don't follow the home arrow if the home arrow doesn't look like it's going the right way. You absolutely need to be aware of your surroundings. And again, don't use GPS rescue mode just to fly to the very end of your range and say, oh, it's okay, it's going to come home and it'll all be fine. It's it's an emergency use only and that should be the only thing you should ever use it for. If you are happy with what you're seeing, you can go ahead using your OSD and set your failsafe into GPS rescue. Of course, you need to be aware that you're in the right position to do this. If you're flying sort of under trees and around things like that, then you don't want this, you just want drop. But if you're going a large open area or you're going out over water, stuff like that, this is when GPS rescue would be of much better use to you and that's the time to use it. And there you go. So we managed to put that GPS to good use and for like 10 pounds, if you've got a spare you are, it's quite a, an interesting feature to mess with. It's kind of nice that um, you've got your latitude and longitude position so the idea is if you crash you can have a look at your DVR and the goggles you can go to that location or if you've lost video and you were sort of going in that direction you can at least pick up the direction you were going and decide exactly where you were and then you've got sort of a trajectory to follow to try and find it if you haven't got a beeper built in which you really should have especially one that's battery backed don't forget those I just want to reiterate again that G 
GPS on Betaflight isn't like NASA. It's not like it will hold position, it will come home and land and that stuff. Very much experimental. And I, I really want to reiterate about this is not, the, the, the idea of this isn't to try and fly to the end of your range, see how far I can go and let it bring me back. Don't don't rely on it. It's, it's a fail safe thing. It's like everything's gone wrong and that's going to bring you back, hopefully. Don't just don't just make, assume it's going to work every time, and don't just blindly follow that home arrow back. Try and take account of your surroundings because I've had GPSs come back with weird data before, and you know, pretty much tell me I was in Norway and heading east at 500 miles an hour, which is obviously not the case. So just use it as a useful tool and a useful thing, but mainly keep an eye on your surroundings and know where you are. Anyway, hope that was helpful. That's that's me and uh, GPS fly with it use it as a, a monitor the height and speed and, and where you're going and stuff use it as a, a maybe a fail safe and um, have, have fun with it i hope that video has been helpful and i will catch you in the next one bye for now well you've made it to the end of the video so thanks once again for watching if you like what you saw then please consider subscribing and if you really like what you saw then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel